So, welcome back. In the last video, we arrived at a point in which we had successfully placed particles randomly inside a box, and then created a way in which we could actually increment the distance of the particles based on their speed. So in this video, we're going to add some collision detection so the particles can actually bounce around inside the box and then eventually bounce around off each other. Let's go ahead and create some collision detection. So the easiest way in which we can create some collision detection, we go into our increment function. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be call a function called collision detection. And then we're going to have to create it. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go over each particle, copy and paste this, and then we're going to have to check whether that particle is outside of the boundaries. And if it is outside of the boundaries, it needs to be reflected so that the speed brings it back inside of the boundary. The easiest way we can do that is to say, let's extract the x and y coordinates separately. So because r is a vector with length 2, when we use this tuple unpacking, it's going to give us the first component of the vector, set it as the x variable, the second component is so the y variable. And then we need to check whether does the x coordinate lie outside of the simulation boundary on either side if it does we need to reflect the particle's x component of velocity we do that again the y component we use two if statements here because if we used an if else statement, it could be conceivable that the particle finds its way in the corner of the box. And when it's in the corner of the box, it needs to be reflected in both X and Y. So we reflect in both the X and Y direction. And let's see if this works. Answer is no. The reason it's not working is because we've not reflected the x and y component. What we need to say is when the particle is outside the box in say the x direction, it needs to have its x component velocity reflected. So that means multiplied by minus one. Go ahead and test it. Beautiful. So we can see now that the particles are bounded by the box itself. Sorry, the, the, we need to take one step further because the particles themselves have a radius. So we need to check whether the, the outermost limit of the particle is touching the walls of the box. So to do that, we say that if the x component of the particle's position is greater than the wall minus its own radius. And likewise, if the particle's x position is less than the left-hand wall, plus particle radius, same for the y component. This should now be correct, so the particle should bounce when its outermost extremity touches the wall. So we can see we have the particles bouncing around, it's very nice. Now we should go ahead and add some collision detection for the Particles themselves. So, if I launch an internet browser, so the Wikipedia page for elastic collision, if we scroll down, gives us the vector formula for determining the scattered velocities from two particles colliding. That's given by this formula here. We go ahead, get that up. We can use this as reference. What we're going to do now. We're going to add some collision detection for the particles themselves. What we need to do, <clears throat> we can see that we need several 
variables in order to determine this. So we're going to need the mass of the particle, so m1 and m2. We're going to need the position of the particles, x1 and x2. We call them r, but these are vector vector positions. We're also going to need the velocity of each particle. So we can go ahead. Do some tuple unpacking. We're going to be doing this for each particle. So each particle is going to check whether it's collided with another particle. If we go ahead and unpack those tuples, you can see we have now have access to M1, M2, R1, R2, V1, V2, etc. We're going to go ahead and change the particle name. So rather than referencing it as just one particle, we need to compare it against another particle. We're going to change particle one and this won't affect the wall detection but first it checks whether the particles guided against the wall and then we need to go in ahead and check whether two particles have collided the easiest way to check that is to check whether the difference between them so r1 minus r2 is the different is the difference vector between them so if we go ahead and work out the magnitude squared of that vector and then if that magnitude squared is less than the combined particle radii squared then the particles have overlapped and the reason we don't do the square root for this operation is because the square root is more expensive than doing the square so technically we're saving a tiny amount of time and then we go ahead and implement these two formulas which I've conveniently written out These are the, the formulas saying that if the particles are overlapping, then we're going to elastically collide them and set the particle velocity to the new particle velocity given by um, this formula, these two formulae. We also need to contain this in a loop itself. So this first loop is looping over a single particle. So for example, particle zero, it then needs to check the collision with every other particle. So we need an, a nested loop inside of here. We need to bring our unpack tuple in this system in here. Then we can go ahead and run that. We see we have nothing. And the reason this probably isn't working is because we've done no check to check whether the particle collides with itself, which it will always do. When the particle collides with itself, we end up with a singularity here because we have a zero vector. We have the, the square magnitude of a zero vector, which is zero, so you have to divide by zero. What we need to do we need to come in and check whether the particle two, which is looping over, is in fact the same particle and ignore it. So continue means continue the next iteration of this loop. Go ahead. And there we see so the particles are now successfully bouncing around. But they still don't appear to be bouncing off each other. There's a very good reason for that. Is that once the particle, say particle one, recognizes that it's bouncing off particle two, then Coming through this loop, particle two also recognizes that bounce of particle one. So it undergoes the same collision twice, which means that the, uh, the resulting velocity vectors don't change. So we need a way of basically saying that if particle one has collided with particle two, don't then bother looking what particle two does. Now there is a disadvantage here that if you have the rare instance in which you have a three particle or four particle collision, it's only going to be colliding one of those two pairs. Um, from the from the three or four particles that are colliding, and this might be a an oversight in the simulation, but at the same time it's not going to break anything because the energy will still be conserved. So it's just ignoring those rare occasions, which won't actually make too much difference, as we'll see later. What we can do is go ahead and say we're going to create a list. So this is a this is going to be a list called ignore list. And it's going to say that if a particle has collided, 
if for example if pascal 1 has collided with pascal 2 then pascal 2 is not going to be considered in the next iteration of this loop so we're not going to be looking for further collisions so go ahead and run that we see here if you follow some of the particles you see them they'll start bouncing off each other which is really nice and to make this a bit more visually appealing what we can do is say that actually we had this variable inside the particle called color and at the minute they're all set to blue but we're not actually using the particle color in our plot we can go ahead and change that so where we update our animated plot and set the offsets we can go ahead and set the color instead so we can say a scatter dot set color and then we need to give it some colors so we'll call a function called sim dot particle colors and then we need to go up into our simulation class and create a function called particle colors and again we're going to use a list comprehension in which we return a list of the particle colors go ahead and see if that works it does so you'll see they're all now changed to actually blue and then where we created our particles we can say particle sim dot particles let's choose the first particle so particle with id zero or the first particle in the list of particles change its color to red and this will mean we can easily track a single path and there we can see the particle does indeed bounce around off the walls and off other particles this is working really nicely let's decrease the simulation time slightly if i go up here make it half the speed Their indication of what's going on and watch it bounce which unfortunately didn't do that time but we'll see that as we run this script again we get a different behavior now that might be desirable in some circumstances so whenever we place these particles randomly inside of the box we are using the numpy.random function so every time we run this we're going to get a different different set of results our particles start off in a different position we don't want that behavior we can add something like numpy.random and then we can give it a seed so that means that the random numbers that are generated even though the numbers are random they're pseudo random meaning that we can if we know the seed we can determine in which order those random numbers appear so they're deterministic random numbers if we seed it at zero go back to our simulation start again we should get the same simulation every time now let's follow the red dot see if it collides collides with the walls and it looks like it was almost going to collide with the blue particle so let's change the number of frames in the simulation have a look see if it collides not quite yet Go ahead and add some more particles. Let's do 20. And there we are. We can see the red particle colliding with other particles inside the simulation and colliding with the walls. So we've basically got the simulation working. So that's where we'll leave this video for today. What we'll do in the next video is we'll add a second plot to this figure in which we'll actually show the speeds so the distribution speeds uh, of each of the particles or as the particles as a whole and going back to our maxwell boltzmann distribution we should be getting something like this we'll add in some mass and some temperature and speeds etc etc we'll have a look what it looks like stay tuned